Hey everyone, my name is Braden. I'm a dietitian with On Point Nutrition, and today we're going to talk about knives, specifically the chef's knife. We're going to talk about knife care, how to use it, and offering a couple tips on how to chop some kitchen staples. Today we are here to focus specifically on chef's knives. These bad boys can pretty much do anything in your kitchen that you need them to do. They are going to be an extension of your hand in the kitchen. Right, so we gotta talk about quality, okay? When you are buying your chef's knife, ideally you are not going to the nearest store and picking the first one that you see off the shelf that is the cheapest, okay? Picture the chef's knife as an investment because it is going to be used all the time if you are cooking all the time or if you plan to cook all the time, okay? So you wanna buy one that is going to stay sharp and not frustrate you when you are trying to cut tomatoes two years down the road after buying your knife and you're just creating tomato paste because you're just smashing the tomatoes instead of actually cutting them, all right? View this as an investment. Personally, I use a Shun knife. Uh, they are a Japanese knife manufacturer. Uh, and Shun is special because they actually have a sharpening service. So if you ever want to send in your knife to Shun, they will resharpen it for you and essentially it is a brand new knife. Absolutely love this knife. Another great brand that you can go with is Henkels. Okay, this is a German brand. Uh, in terms of differences between different knife brands, there's going to be certain nuances uh, in the handle, in the type of metal that is used. All right, so do your own research is what I always recommend. What is going to work best for you and your needs, um, that is your decision. So do your own research before you purchase your knife, but I definitely recommend investing in a knife that is going to last you. So when we're talking about kitchen knives specifically, there are four main kinds of knife that you want to have in your kitchen for pretty much all kitchen purposes. The first one, that is your chef's knife the most important knife. If you don't have any of the other knives, you wanna make sure you have this one, right? It can kind of be an all around player on the field. It's going to be used the most for your cutting activities. The second one is a serrated knife. That's the one with all of the grooves in it, okay? That is going to be used for cutting breads. Trust me, it is much, much easier to cut breads with a serrated knife. The third one, that is a paring knife. Shorter blade used for fine cutting tasks very small things. The last one is going to be a boning knife. That is going to be used to trim meat, all right? And it's the name, the boning knife. Next, I wanna talk about knife care, all right? Because you do wanna take proper care of your knife. It will extend the life of your knife significantly. I promise you that. Give it some TLC, give it some love and affection, and it will treat you right, okay? So rule number one, never, ever, 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 ever put your chef's knife in the dishwasher. I understand that the dishwasher is very convenient and you just wanna throw everything from cooking into the dishwasher, but the chef's knife is one exception, all right? It, is, it takes about five seconds to hand wash your chef's knife right when you're done using it, right to the sink, give it a scrub dub, give it a rinse, dry it off and put it away. Okay, it takes no time at all, but it will significantly extend life of your knife by not dulling it in the dishwasher, okay? Second thing, you wanna think about the type of cutting board that you are using with your chef's knife. Certain knives will come with recommendations for a type of cutting board that uh, it is best to be used with. However, good, usually good go-tos are wood or plastic. If you're getting into glass or ceramic, those materials can be harder than the knife itself, which will eventually lead to chipping in the knife blade itself, uh, which will dull the knife over time. So you wanna be careful with the type of cutting board, a material cutting board that you're using. Well, all right, now that you know how to pick your knife and how to take care of it, we are going to dive into how to use all right, my friends, first thing is first, you want to hold the knife properly. Okay, so right when you put it in your hand, how are you holding the knife? Not like this. I'll tell you that much. Okay, this does not offer optimal control over the knife and is not how it is designed to be held. 
See how there's this little indent right here at the handle where the handle meets the metal? You want to put your first finger and your thumb right in that indentation, okay? And you wrap the other fingers around the handle. This is how you're going to get optimal control over that knife, okay? So not here, here, okay? Second thing, how is your other hand? Okay, what the heck is this guy doing while you're chopping? I'll tell you this much, it's not like this. Ooh, did I scare you guys? Hope we're not. Okay, so when you are cutting food, you want to make, make a claw. Okay, picture Toy Story, the claw, right? All right, what that is going to do is that is going to prevent you from slicing your fingers off as you move the knife closer to your hand. Okay, you can grip the food still and keep it in place while not chopping your fingers off. Okay, so not holding the food like this, holding the food like this. Protect those fingers. All right, last thing is going to be the motion of the knife itself, okay? Certain knives are designed more to press straight down into the food, such as this Henkel's, okay? This one is more designed, and you can tell from the difference from the blades, they're different cutting styles, okay? Different strokes, all right? But you want to make sure you are using the designed stroke uh, style for your knife. Um, that is going to lead to the, uh, the easiest cutting of whatever food you're cutting. So for example, the Shun, it is a forward and down motion as opposed to a chopping motion. Now, you can still use it for rocking, all right, if you are trying to chop up something super small, such as garlic or onion, um, you can use it in a rocking motion, but a lot of times you want to use that forward and down motion as opposed to, again, tankles. You can do more of a chopping motion. Last but not least, my friends, I want to talk about cutting a couple of the staple ingredients that you're going to hopefully have in your kitchen most of the time. Okay, these are going to be found in tons of recipes, um, very, very much staple ingredients. So we've got red onion, we've got Roma tomato, and we've got fresh garlic, okay? Let's go ahead and start with the garlic. When you are cutting garlic, step one is going to be chopping the head off of the piece of garlic that you are using, okay? Once you've chopped that off, you then want to take your blade lay it on the garlic and give it a quick little break just like that not too much pressure you don't want to fully smash it but what that does is it separates the garlic from its peel makes it very easy to extract that garlic once you've got it here you then want to again lay that blade flat on the garlic and you really want to give it pressure now so smash it down so that it is a flatter surface to cut on much much easier to chop Okay, remember our claw technique, holding the knife right. I'm going to simply chop one way, get it all off the knife, scooch it all together, and then I can go over and rock back and forth until I get to the consistency that I want for that garlic. All right, but what that smashing does is it also extracts more of the flavor from the garlic, which is always what we want, more flavor, okay? Next, let's go with tomatoes. Step one with a tomato, you want to get that nasty little piece out the top, all right, where the vine was. So I'm going to very carefully, not too deep into the tomato, just going around in a circle until, boom, got the top, throw it in the sink, all right? I'm then going to go from the uh, spot where I sliced, slice it down the middle. But biggest thing with tomatoes, you do not want to press too hard. They are very, very soft fruit, all right? So you want, and yes, tomatoes are technically a fruit. You want to use that blade as much as you can, okay? So I'm going to, again, with the shun, it is a forward and down motion. And look at how easy that was, right? If I use the knife as it is meant to be used, tomatoes are very, very simple to slice, okay? So back and forth, really use the entire length of that blade when you are slicing tomatoes. Don't press too hard. Last one is gonna be onion. Now, I've already chopped this onion in half, okay? So I've left the 
top and bottom on so far. But now I'm going to remove those once I cut it in half. Not too deep into the onion. Okay. Boom. Now this is specifically a technique for dicing an onion. There are a lot of ways to cut up an onion. Depends on the recipe. Uh, I just took the outer layer off. Depends on the recipe that you are uh, going for, but um, a lot of them call for diced onions, so we are going to dice the onion today. Okay, so once you've got it here, you've taken the top and bottom off, taken that outer layer uh, off. I'm then going to go in from the top and I'm going to slice down. Notice I'm not going all the way through to the other side, I'm leaving a little bit of space there, going straight down into the onion and then cutting all the way through. I'm gonna do that all the way to the other side. And once I've done the vertical ones, I'm gonna go in from the side and I'm going to, again, I'm not going all the way through the onion here. I'm only going just until uh, there's a little bit left on that other end, okay? Now that I'm here, I've already chopped it vertically and horizontally. I'm able to go in from the top and slice straight down into that onion. And notice it is coming off in diced form, okay? So if you want it smaller than this, you can either, once you've got it here, you can run over it that way, or you can simply make the initial cuts in the onion a little bit closer together, all right? So three helpful tips for cutting three of the most common food items found in the kitchen in recipes. Last thing, once you have a cut all of the food that you would like to cut and use in your meal. You want to turn the, if you're going to use the knife to scrape the food off of the cutting board, don't scrape it blade side down, okay? You want to turn the knife over and use the back of the knife to scrape the food off. That way you are not dulling the blade side, okay? So right when you're done chopping, don't just quickly slide it all off, turn the blade over, slide the food off that way. All right, y'all, there you have it. We have covered how to pick your chef's knife, how to take care of your chef's knife, how to use your chef's knife, and even covering a, a couple specific uh, ingredients that you most likely have in your house at the moment. So hopefully all of these tips help you and encourage you. If you are not cooking already, go out, invest in a nice, chef, a nice chef's knife that is going to encourage you to cook more. It's gonna make chopping a much more enjoyable experience and just cooking overall all right so go out get yourself a nice chef's knife take good care of it and it will take care of you